Well, cer certainly, certainly free, free prior, so that yeah. Understand. Certainly free prior and informed consent is a fundamental issue and a fundamental right of indigenous peoples under the Declaration of Indigenous People and also as a basic human right that uh, it goes beyond and you know much deeper than UN declarations. Uh, that uh, indigenous peoples must be consulted about what is happening to their lands is not something that we can dispute. There is no grounds for not consulting indigenous peoples, except if we are going to assume that the plans that are being made for these lands are actually not supportive of indigenous people's concerns and needs and aspirations and rights. Only then does free prior and informed consent become a problem. So if all these things and all these issues are going to be respected in a process, then free prior informed consent should not be an issue at all. It should be an assumption. And if it is an assumption, then we should not need to talk about it so much. It should just be there as a foundation of every program that's taken up on indigenous people's lands or on common lands belonging to all people who have a right to clean air and clean water and decent food. Uh, there is always a very big gap between language in text and the implementation on the ground. The powers that be will always select the text that suits them. No matter how much text there is that protects indigenous people's rights or human rights in general, those things can always be swept under the carpet once a program is moving. So it's very important to understand that red should not be allowed to move in the first place. Because once the projects are moving, it will be very difficult to derail them or to ensure that these rights are respected within a framework, a project framework, which basically has no room for them. Well, you see, uh, from the side of governments, governments so are already putting in place like legislation and policy which affect indigenous people's land rights and access to waters and other uh, natural resources on their territories, which will actually... Uh, you know, uh, undermine those rights and w in which indigenous people will not have any further say in what happens to those uh, lands and those issues. Uh, so from the government side, there are already legislation and policy being put in place. There are also advocates and unfortunately also some indigenous people who perhaps don't clearly understand what is happening with the dynamics of red and uh, red-related policies. And uh, as always, perhaps uh, they are trying to be optimistic and hoping for the best. But uh, our long experience should tell us by now that we should not assume uh, such uh, good intentions without being very sure that the provisions for it are in place. Simply having such language as free prior informed consent or some other protective language is not, uh, or the de Declaration on Indigenous People, just having a language there without the mechanisms to enforce it and without the systems to monitor it. That is meaningless because just as there are huge investments in monitoring other issues and other aspects of uh, project implementation, there has to be equal uh, str uh, emphasis given and equal provision made and equal resources put into monitoring and uh, enforcing the provisions of DRIP and of free prior informed consent. Well, you see, the big problem is that many indigenous peoples around the world, definitely in Asia, where I come from, definitely in India, are not even recognized as indigenous people. The government of India has stated very clearly in the Universal Periodic Review that all its people are indigenous. Now, that, that is an absurd statement to make because somebody from the north of India is not indigenous to the south of India and from the west of India cannot be indigenous to the east of India or someone from the mountains cannot be indigenous to the coast. It's very clear that we are talking here, the government of India is talking about nationality not indigenous identity, okay? Sure, everybody has a right under national constitutional laws, but indigenous rights are different, and they are more fundamental than merely nationality or citizenship rights.
and uh, that is something that the government of India must recognize because the government of India itself has supported the Declaration on Indigenous Peoples and it must be equally supportive in enforcing the provisions of those rights within its own territories. Yeah, but in regards to red, what does that mean? Well, in regards to red, what that means is that the government of India is already having policies that are displacing indigenous people. There are so many conflicts on the ground where security forces and armed police are forcibly evicting indigenous peoples from their traditional lands in order to put uh, put in steel plants or in order to put in hydropower or in order to make nuclear facilities which are uh, going to claim credits eventually under CDM. But these are all violating indigenous people's rights to land. They are in, they're violating indigenous people's right to life and to their freedom of assembly and speech. Uh, in demanding that these rights be accepted, there are hundreds of people already being imprisoned, killed, raped, tortured. And uh, the government of India must take note of these things and must uh, rectify its conduct towards indigenous peoples. Well, to give one very uh, clear example of this problem, uh, the government of India is nationalizing the entire coastline. When I say nationalizing, what it means is that the entire coastal belt from enti of entire uh, subcontinent is going to be put directly under the control of the Home Ministry. This is going to remove all power of local government authority, district level, village level, state level, to actually influence anything that is going to be happening on those coastlines. And uh, that is going to make a very serious problem because people's protests at the local level have to be attended by government agencies at the local level. Uh, local organizations cannot be running to Delhi every three days in order to complain or to, you know, to, to uh, object to uh, things which are being done in their little area of course, nor, nor should they have to. But if, this, if the government takes over the entire coastline, which it is intending to do, it's going to have all these mega projects like building sea walls and whatnot, which are going to deeply affect indigenous people's ways of life, not only indigenous people, but other local communities. And this is going to create serious problems for livelihood. It's going to actually damage the environment more because these kinds of uh, mega projects have never shown good results. And what is it with CDM? So this is definitely, uh, under adaptation, definitely these kinds of projects are going to claim credits. They're going to claim money. And this money should be used for better things. Can you articulate what money? CDM? CDM money, I suppose, or adaptation funds, perhaps. We don't know because the project hasn't yet come up or if it is in preparation. The government of India has not divulged anything. So there is no knowledge, let alone free prior informed consent being used by the government in order to collect the public opinion or the opinion and views of indigenous peoples on this. Uh, so, you know, it's very clear that these kind of projects do not expect to involve people or to use the principle of free prior informed consent.